I grew up on my parents' 100-acre property, and I refused to stay inside. I loved being in nature. I would just go out there by myself, and I'd have all this time, and I would be talking to God, and we'd have this conversation, and like I didn't know that that was strange or unusual. I would just pray to Him, and then sometimes He would, he would say something to me and speak to me. I was about 10 or 12 years old. Uh, middle of the day, God gives me a very vivid picture of a little kid, and I'm holding her, swinging around in um, my parents' yard, and she's just laughing like crazy. In the picture that I had in my mind, she had dark skin and dark eyes, and uh, God said, this is gonna be your daughter, and her name is gonna be Chloe. Um, Walt and I grew up together. I I think he moved to town the year I was born, so we've known each other my whole life. Um, when I was 10, we moved right across the pasture from him, so we grew up together. Her family and my family were friends, and so I got to go over to her house um, frequently. Of course, she's a little munchkin, so I'm not really paying attention. First, I was using shampoo and conditioner, but not anymore. Now I use this. I don't know the name, but it is good for your hair. So I, my whole life, I was like, I, I think Walt Manus is amazing. <laughs> and I always thought when I grow up, I want to find someone just like him. Um, it was in my age group. <laughs> I went to university um, about 30 minutes from where he was living. And when I, when I went, he just kind of came in and helped get me settled and helped introduce me to a church. And so we just started spending more and more time together. and. We were sitting in his car just talking and we had this conversation about what our dreams and our hopes were for the future. And um, I said that I felt like um, God had just made me to be a mom. That's what I wanted more than anything. I wanted to be a mother. And I said that I had actually a name picked out already that I wanted to name my daughter. And and he, he said, I do too, which I thought was weird because, you know, I didn't think guys did that. <laughs> and I was like, well, what's the name? And she said, Chloe. And he's like, you've got to be kidding me. You won't believe this. God gave me, when I was 12, that name, Chloe. So he's telling me this story and I'm thinking, this is crazy. Like, first of all, I don't have a lot of experience with God speaking to me like that. <laughs> she was in the same place that I was. We couldn't believe it, you know. In the picture, Chloe always had olive skin, so he always thought he would marry a woman with olive skin. She can't have a, a brown-eyed child. I didn't know what to do with it. I think we both knew pretty early on that we were going to get married. It just. I don't know. The best way I can describe it is that Walt felt like home to me. Like from the very beginning, I felt like, yeah, this is this is where I belong with this guy. When we first got married, we we decided we wanted to wait a little while to have children. We ended up um, traveling, doing some work with some different missions agencies, and then at a certain point, we realized, no, this is the right time. We want to start pursuing having children, and we were so excited. We thought we thought it was just going to happen immediately, you know. And so we were like, yeah, let's start our family. Let's have children and. You know, months turned into years, and pretty soon we were four years into trying and still nothing. I had always clung to this promise that God had given me about the daughter, so I didn't know when it was going to happen, but it was, it was starting to get hard to wait. It was really hard. It was really, um, I don't know, I think I, I struggled with questioning God's goodness in that time. Um, because I just felt like it was so mean, you know, like such a mean thing to do. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so there was like a probably four and a half year period that um, I would say was really, really hard on us individually, on us um, in our marriage, and also like the way we were relating with God, especially for me, I felt like, is God good even when he's not doing things that I would define as good? All of her friends were having kids and, and she had to just wait and put on this cheesy smile, this fake smile and say, we're happy for you. And every time that we, we would hear about someone getting pregnant, we would just be devastated because we were thinking, this isn't going to happen for us. We're just, we're just fools. We're fools who, who want kids and it's never going to happen. And then I would say somewhere, I feel like God shifted something in me so significant. There was a point where I started to realize, actually, no, I, I can live like a really full and really happy life and like experience so much with God and like know Him so deeply and be satisfied in the deepest way a human can be satisfied, um, even without having a child. 
It sounds like a simple concept, but for me, that was a big, a big change, a big shift in, in my perspective. We kept praying through that time, God, if you're saying that you don't want us to be parents, like just take this desire away from us. But more than ever, we wanted to be parents. Like it just, the desire was almost getting stronger. He kept compelling us in his love to like love, love this idea of being parents and love this idea of, um, yeah, of having this little girl. And so well, that's what we did. We just kept, we just kept praying. There were tons of people praying for us and with us, people that we didn't even know. Like people would come to us and say, oh, these, this Bible study group I'm a part of is praying for you guys, is praying for this situation. And I don't know, that was a really um, special thing to get to f feel like the body of Christ in a larger, on a larger scale, like standing with you through something. Annie is like, well, maybe, maybe we're supposed to adopt. And I was adamantly against it. How are you feeling about adoption? Yeah, I don't want to speak about adoption. I had this thought of like, I don't want, I called it a Band-Aid baby. I, we are struggling, we are hurting, and you know, I don't, I didn't, I didn't want just a fix. I didn't, I didn't want just some kid. I wanted the kid that we were supposed to have, you know? And God just like, he progressed, progressed me from like being adamantly against adoption to be like, you know, I, I just want the kid that God wants. Maybe it's not supposed to come through biological means. Maybe it's, it's supposed to be through adoption. So what do you think? I think that I'm very excited to adopt, but waiting will be hard. We had gone through all the paperwork. Annie had done so much work and I had supported her in that, but I still wasn't convinced that the adoption was right. I remember one night we were at Walt's sister's house and I was checking my email and there was an email that came in and it said, it's a girl. I clicked on it and I realized it was from the adoption agency and they said, we just wanted to let you know that a birth mother has chosen you guys and yeah, you're gonna be parents. And I was like, I just sat there looking at the email like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Annie gets this email, she's super excited and I'm just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait and see. Cause I don't, I don't know, you know? We have some adoption news. Finally, there's something happening. Yeah, we're really excited. She'll be born in late February or early March. Coming close. And we're working on her name right now. We're working on it. Working the name Chloe's completely off, off the table. We've abandoned it. We had decided, oh, that was just a fluke thing. That was a coincidence that we both liked that name, you know, that was nothing. And so we had even talked about a different name and the social worker working with us, she says, okay, well, the birth mother would like to meet you before she has the baby. And we were like, yes, we want to meet her. Sounds great. And so we took a trip up to Wichita. Today's a big day, huh? Yeah. What are we doing? We're going to meet Allison for the first time. You nervous? Yeah. Little bit. We went to the house where she was living and we knocked on the door and... She opens the door and it looks like a grown-up version of this little girl in my head that was from the past. And I was like, oh my goodness, what in the world, you know? And so in a second, in my head, the name was back on the table. We went up to this room and sat and talked for, I don't know, three hours or so. The social worker says, now nah, let's talk about a name. Have you, have you thought of a name? She said, yeah, well, ever since I got pregnant, even before I knew it was a girl, I've been calling this baby Chloe. We were just floored. And both Walt and I, I mean, I, I don't even remember what we did exactly. I just know that I was ugly crying. We were weeping and she was like, oh, you hate the name. And we're like, oh my goodness, no, we love the name. God has spoken, he's told us this name. It just dawned on me before I ever knew you guys existed or anything. Just was like, I want to name, you know, this little girl Chloe. And I didn't know if you guys would like it or stick with it or anything like that. I just kind of figured maybe you'd have something else. But so that's why, like, when I threw it out there, I was just kind of like, um, I've been calling her Chloe. <laughs> and then you guys, like, oh, and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. It's my name. <laughs> All those doubts about having the Band-Aid baby were just completely out of the window. And I was, it felt like, I just had full body shivers. It was, like, it was like the Holy Spirit was just right there. This is so much a God thing that's going on right now. You've been uh, planned for for a long time. <laughs> Before you were even conceived, we knew your name. 
And I think we know what you're going to look like. I don't know, but we'll see. I love you. We look forward to we look forward to seeing you. When the birth mom said the name Chloe, you know, in an instant, I had become a father. Even before she was born, I was her dad. This surreal presence of God was just all around us, and I just, I felt him saying to me, see how much I love you? Do you see this? Like, do you see what I've done? Like, I've been writing this story. You had no idea I've been writing this story for years. Since, since Walt was a kid, I've been writing this story, and I realized, how foolish I was, I guess, like how how um, my perspective was just so skewed in my own pain that what I saw as him not loving me was in fact him being the most loving he could have been. Day of. Day of. What were you about to do? Go to the hospital. I can't find your toothbrush holder. Well, no. Are you nervous? A little bit. Yeah, I was just crazy nervous that morning. Like. Um, I remember going to the hospital and, and then all of a sudden it was happening. All of a sudden the doctor came in and was like, okay, she's ready and you're going to have a baby now. And um, I don't know, and there was just all this movement and bustling around and then Chloe was there. Like I was just, I was looking at this baby, this, my baby. I was just looking at her all of a sudden, like she wasn't there and then she was there. Big girl, how are you doing, Annie? I'm good, I'm really good. Yeah. yeah. So many years of anticipating her. As a child, she's here, you know? She's been a part of my life for so long and she's finally here. I remember just look, like holding her and looking at her face and being like, I'm your mom, I'm your mom. And I just sounded so weird to say those words. There was no mistake, I am the father of this child, just like God had always planned it to be. And I'm completely owning it. Like on cloud nine, just amazed at what God has done. It was like he was whispering to me in that moment, like, I've been here this whole time. And you didn't know, but I've been here this whole time. I've been walking this thing with you. And I was just saying, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I've got something good. I've got something good up ahead. It's a constant struggle to just sit in his sovereignty. And when everything is falling apart in your, in your mind, just to wait. And, and there were so many people that got to celebrate with us. I can't even count the number of people who came and said that, um, that they had prayed for us or that they had um, waited for this baby with us or that our story had somehow spoken to them. I don't know, it was just such a, a special time of seeing like, this wasn't just about me and Walt and this baby and, and our birth mother, it was about like all these people that God wanted to touch and encourage and bless through this story. He just doesn't leave anything to chance. It's, it's not random. And it's just, it's amazing. It's a miracle. You know? It only speaks of God. Uh, people can say, oh, it's, it's, just, it's just a coincidence, you know? You, you can't convince me that. I think God is incredible. I think it's incredible the way that He flung the stars into space. And that same God, the same God who keeps the world from falling apart, he loves me. He loves me. <laughs> With or without us ever having a child, that's what he's taught me through this. Like, he loves me, and I can be so secure in that love. And to be able to trust that and to rest in that, I mean, it's the greatest gift. <laughs>